well, this is kind of the end of the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, we wasn't moving too much. We were sitting in the foxhole almost all day without walking. And uh, your feet would get cold without even you knowing it, you know. And uh, finally, I got there where my feet started coloring and turned color, you know. So uh, they sent me back to the aid station. So I get back to the aid station, which is just some old house. And I gets in the front door there, and uh, here lays the guy on the stretcher there, uh, his leg blown off right at the knee, you know, not saying a word. And they, I didn't see the doctor. Doctor was in, in another room. And I thought, boy, you, you must be tougher than hell <laughs> you laying there with your leg blown off and not saying a word. So then when the doc come in, he asked me what my problem was. Well, when I started walking and got some circulation, I knew what my problem was. And uh, on the line, then uh, a jeep was bringing mail up th the line. So he stopped, picked me up, and took me to the aid station, which was somebody's house. And uh, like I said, when I got in there, I see this guy laying there with the leg blown off. So I let the doc go through those guys and get them shipped back out, you know. And then he come to me and he said, what's your problem? I told him, he said, take your shoes off. Took them off. And my feet was... <laughs> Uh, looking pretty dark. <clears throat> and uh, he said, well, well, you sit over there, we'll haul you back to the aid stage to the hospital, you know. So uh, I ended up from there uh, some house for a night, but then I got another, into a hospital in the middle of Paris. I could look out there and I could see Eiffel Tower when I was sleeping, and all the guys in my room they they were people with frostbite, frozen feet, and everybody got a different remedy. Some of them got whiskey, but I wasn't lucky enough to get that, so <laughs> I had to take the regular medicine. And uh, they kept us in there, I don't know what it was, a week, and they seen it wasn't getting any better, so I was shipped across, across the English Channel uh, to England and the hospital I got in there was probably was 200 feet long, and it was just all guys with frozen feet. And uh, every morning, and there was much, not much of anything they could give you to cure that, except keep off your feet. So every morning, why two doctors would come along, and you'd sit on the edge of the bed and get your feet out, and if if they looked okay, all right, but. Every, every day, three, four guys have to go back to the operating room, they cut their feet off. So, so uh, I was pretty fortunate to just keep my feet and get off the line in time. Can you talk more about the pain? You know, even though your feet did not have to be amputated, what, what, what was the pain you felt at the time and the pain you feel today? Uh, <clears throat> today, well, at that time, uh, they were just numb. Yes, I don't say that there was much of any pain. And uh, in the hospital, all you, you were supposed to do is keep off your feet. So all the guys along there, we'd get on somebody's bed and we'd play cards all day. <laughs> and uh, that was our treatment. And uh, of course in London, or, where, where I was first, oh no, Paris was first. Why, they give you whiskey and different things to try to stimulate your, your blood flow. But I don't think they got anything that really cures frozen feet. And I mean, what about today? I mean, have you had trouble walking because of Well, today, when it gets about, uh, about uh, three, four in the morning, I get up and I sit by the fireplace and I have to warm my feet up because they're colder than heck. So you, even today, I mean, that, that's amazing. Yeah. That, you know, when you were on the front line, did you change your socks or your shoes at all? When you're on the front line, all you do is make sure you got ammo in your gun and you watch out so somebody don't shoot you. 
and you care less about your feet, 